The ones that I have in my 5 and in my 20, sometimes if you startle them, they'll swim to the back of the tank. I don't know, I just felt it wouldn't have been right for you guys. Hey guys, I just got back from the Jersey Shore. Sorry about no water change Wednesday. I thought I would try to do it from down there and it was would have been just, I don't know, I just felt it wouldn't have been right for you guys. I took some footage, so maybe I'm gonna interconnect it with the video today in some way, but it's good to be back. I was only there two days. What we'll do today is water change Wednesday, even though I do it on Sunday, and even though you're seeing it on Friday. first question I have today, and I don't have the individual's name in front of me, but it was in regard to clownfish and the size of the tank that's appropriate for the clownfish. Uh, he had read that online that you shouldn't keep a clownfish in under 20 gallons of water. So let's take that as a first question. In my opinion and in my experience, it's perfectly fine to keep a clown in a five gallon tank. I've observed their behavior over the years and most clowns don't even move within six to 12 inches away from their spot, especially if they get into an anemone. Sometimes if you startle them, they'll swim to the back of the tank, but most of the time they hang out right in their spot. So it's not an issue of gallonage of water, it's an issue of space. Some fish keeping has to do with your experience. Obviously you'll want to check with experts who understand fish behavior and understand what they need to live a quality life in an aquarium. The other thing I wanted to make mention of also is if you get an aquacultured fish, for example, my clowns in both my tanks are aquacultured. Keep in mind that when an aquacultured fish comes into life, into the world, it comes in in a tank. Other than DNA and genetics, the fish has been conditioned to live in an aquarium. And when clownfish are spawned, they're spawned in hundreds. What I notice about the clown, which is interesting, is when I first get them, an aquacultured clown, they hang out at the very top of the aquarium for weeks and weeks because that's where they are in the aquaculture tanks. They're all bunched in and there's tons of them and they all kind of congregate near the top of the aquarium. After a month or so, they slowly work their way down and find a spot in the aquarium and settle in and make that their home. There's a couple good vendors out there that before you purchase a fish will tell you what the fish is good for, size, tank, what it needs to eat, and they're pretty reliable. Obviously, there's only specific fish that you can keep in a nano tank, and the ones that I have in my five and in my 20 have proven to be fine specimens for 20 gallons and my five and a half. Another issue would just be overcrowding. You could have the right kind of fish in your nano aquarium, but you may have too many. So obviously, not only are you gonna run into nutrient issues, but you'll run into overcrowding and then they become very territorial. So I was down the shore the last couple days and in the morning I'd go out for my coffee and take a walk along the beach before anybody showed up or too many people showed up. 
And it got me thinking about our reef tanks a little bit. You know, it's pretty incredible how we take 20 gallons of water or five gallons of water and we take life from these massive oceans and keep it here in our living room or bedroom or wherever and we keep them in these small gallons of water. It is very cool that we do that and it often makes me wonder, you know, what's the pull there? Why do we like to do that? Maybe you could leave a comment below as to why you keep your reefs. Okay, Ty asked, would I recommend the Heiger Mini Wave Maker for a 20 gallon long? And I would say no, Ty, only because of the length of the tank and the pump would have to carry a longer distance. If you had a 20 gallon cube like the one I have behind me, maybe if you had a strong return pump coming into the aquarium. I also had a question about how to lower nitrates and I recommended that viewer to go to one of my other videos, but plain and simple to lower nitrates, water change guys, that's all. Water change and maybe reduce your feeding just a little bit. I did want to show you something here in the 20 that's got me a little concerned about my Stylophora and my Digitata. Let's take a look. I'll show you what I mean. I'm not sure what's going on here now, guys. About three days ago, these were doing fine. And what I noticed is that I put some new hermit crabs in the tank here because I got quite a few for my five gallon because I saw some hair algae cropping up in some spots. So I wanted to see if I could take care of that. And I had a few extra because I didn't want to overload my five gallon. And it looks like RTN on this one. And over here on the Digitata, the, all the polyps have just retracted. Over here, they haven't on the top area and that was kind of the only area that the hermits were not climbing on all right there you go back again on top i don't know what to think my only thought is that it's very possible that there's not enough algae and food in the 20 gallon tank for the amount of hermits that I have in there and they're hungry and now they're eating my stylophora. It's the only thing I can think of. So I'm having a little issue in the five gallon with some hair algae. It's starting to clump up on the grape calerpa. Last week I did a 75% water change and actually lifted this whole structure up and vacuumed underneath it and I'm going to test again and I'm also going to maybe try a little lanthanum. It might have been because my phosphate was high. If you recall the other video, I had quite a high phosphate level. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that and try some things there. Jorge asked about battery backup and a 250 watt heater in the winter and a chiller in the summer. So 250 watt in the winter 
yes, my battery backup would work, but you then lose the amount of hours it's going to run. Remember, 100 watts of devices and a 1,000 watt battery, you can power that for about 10 hours. So if you go to a 250 watt heater, now you're well above 100, now you're double it, so you're down to maybe four hours with the heater alone. And a chiller, I would say, out of the question. Chillers draw so much power, uh, depending on the type you have, so you'd need a generator for a chiller. Thanks, Jorge. All right, that's it for this one, guys. I just wanted to say thanks to the new viewers, new subscribers, I appreciate it. I'm approaching the seven month mark here on YouTube on the reefing and uh, I'll keep doing it and have a great day. We'll see you on Sunday. For me, it's this sense of wonder. You know, the idea of 